Greetings and salutations my friends, welcome to another FM17 team guide. Today we are looking at Crystal Palace, so we're going to go through the club from top to bottom. It's going to take around 13 minutes, so sit back and enjoy. We're going to talk about the philosophies, how the club expects you to play, what they expect you to achieve this season. Then we're going to look through transfer budgets, wage budgets, stuff like that. A quick brief look at the staff to see where we need improving and the team report. Then we're going to look at the under 18s and under 23s to see if we've got any superstars in the making in those teams little hidden away gems that we can find we're then going to go through the squad as a whole have a quick look at each of the players talk about how good the team is what weaknesses what strength the team has and where you should spend your money and then we're going to talk about how difficult this would be as a challenge so first up is the philosophies they expect us to sign young players for the first team and develop players using the club's youth system i but i like both those because that's how i play fm i love buying young players and making them amazing so that suits me just fine finances wise 10.6 million not too bad at all and 114 odd thousand in wages so i'm quite happy with that but what do they expect us to achieve this season i'll be i'll be interested to know this one maybe mid table Minimum expectations is that team, yeah, mid table. So, mid table, they're going for the FA Cup. They expect us to get the fifth round and fourth round of the EFL Cup. So, mid table, okay, that's not too bad. What do we have? 10 million pounds to spend. So, we're going to go through the team now. So, first off, we'll go through the staff, have a quick look. Um, needs a little bit of work. We haven't got that much space for extra staff members, so maybe you might have to cull a few play a few of these staff off just so you can improve. But definitely need some work. Um, here's the team report. I'll let I'll, you can pause it here if you want to read through that, and I won't go into it because I'm going to go through it later anyway. So let's look at the under 18s and see if we've got any world beaters. There's one that obviously stands out, and that's Kean Flanagan. He is a 16-year-old Irish central midfielder. Uh, with some interesting stats actually nothing the only thing that stands out is the determination but all a lot of other stats are 10 9 and 10 everything is 9 and 10 I think this guy could develop into a pretty decent players with some tutoring um, you really need to pick early on how you want him to play it's saying he loves pretty much any role he's pretty versatile I would try and pick one now right at the beginning of the game of how you want to develop this player how you want to mold this player into a good player so he becomes good at that job rather than just being like decent at everything so so pick a role for him early but he does look like a decent prospect no other real ones standing out next up we've got the under 23s and nobody amazing we'll have a look at one um, quite a big squad probably kill a few of the uh, rubbish players at the bottom there. Jason Ienga Lokilo, 17 year old Congolese player, because why not? Um, yeah, doesn't look that great, does he? Right winger with four stamina. I know he's young, but that's never going to be high, is it? Um, yeah, let's move on. I don't think he's going to be a world beater. So let's have a look at the main squad, and we'll go through it quickly. Uh, just sort of a brief look through each of the positions. So we can work out where we need to strengthen and, and what sort of tactic we'd use. So Steve Mandanda is your number one and Wayne Hennessy is your number two. Mandanda, French number two goalkeeper, 22 caps. Just a very, very good goalkeeper from mid-table side. Don't need to touch that. They're both good. That's nice to know. We just move on swiftly. Look at that. Joel Ward is our right back player and he is very good i do like him he's got some interesting stats 26 years old so he's not even reached the peak here he's wanted who's he wanted by liverpool okay interesting um but a very good right footed player can play left but i don't like playing wrong sided footers again on the other side that doesn't even make any sense but you know what i meant uh decent physicals i think he could be a very good player um He's probably going to be first choice isn't he we've got martin kelly who's the ex liverpool player can play as a defensive fullback, obviously much worse going forward, but you can also play centre back pretty well actually. Uh, just a decent squad player, really, nothing particularly special about him. And we've got James Tompkins, who's obviously much more of a centre back, so we'll talk about them when they go through centre backs. So Joel Ward as your main right back, with Martin Kelly as a backup, that's not too bad at all. Then we've got Papa Suare as our main left back. Um, been at the club for three seasons now, and he looks pretty solid. He's actually a got the stats for a decent centre-back to be fair 
Um, 16 headings, quite high for a left back. Um, just a decent, solid player, decent going forward. I like him a lot. He's perfectly fine in the first team. Don't need to worry about that position, although we do need a backup. Um, I wouldn't waste my money on a backup left back unless you had some left over, so maybe like a loan deal or something like that. But we'll go through that in a minute. Now, through the centre-back choices. So we've got Martin Kelly, who we know is a decent backup option. We've got the new signing, James Tompkins, starts the uh, game eight weeks out. Uh, but he's a very, very good player. He's going to be our first choice, along with probably Scott Dan, I imagine. Um, another very good player. Lacks a little bit of pace, and he's getting older a bit now. His physicals are going to drop down even more. And then we've got Damian Delaney, who's our backup option. Again, lack of pace, age. Decent for like a backup for a season. Uh, but you will need to strengthen long term. So, out of those four, that's not too bad. You've got two very much your first teamers and two backups. Maybe one more might be needed, I'd say, especially as Martin Kelly is also backup right back. <clears throat> so, a little bit of strengthening need there, but not too bad. Then we're going to go on to the central midfield. We've got James MacArthur out for nine weeks at the beginning. He is a defensive midfielder, ball winning midfielder, uh, very good defensive stats. But randomly, he's really good at crossing really useful for a defensive midfielder but a good solid player 28 years old now so he's into his peak then we've got Machal Flamini who they obviously got from Arsenal again another ball winning midfielder um, does like a good sending off doesn't he 18 aggression along with dives into tackles uh, is dangerous I get that trained out of him as soon as possible because that could be an issue uh then we've got Johan Kabai, obviously one of the star players at the club. Very good uh, deep line playmaker, really solid player. 30 years old now. You'll get a couple of really good years out of him, though. He's going to be one of the first names on your team sheet. Um, next up, we've got Joe Ledley, the bearded wonder. I, I, I do like his beard. It's a good beard. Again, another ball-winning midfielder, but he's, he's much more than that. He's very versatile, as you can see. Really well-rounded stats. Again, 29, another older player. There's quite a lot of... Older players here. So the ex-Cardiff player is up next. Jordan Much, 24 years old. So a bit of youth in the team. And a good backup player. I'd give him a little bit of game time. He can still improve. Um, but they're your sort of four main central midfield options. and at, Or five, sorry. And actually I'm pretty, I'm very happy with that. Totally happy with that. Next up we've got wingers. And it looks like we've got quite a few wingers to choose from here. So first up we've got Jason Punchin. Who is, thir again, 30 years old. Plays best as a shadow striker. Um, but equally good on the wing, I'd say. Uh, not the paciest, but just enough to get around a few players. Uh, good free kick taker is always nice to have in the squad. Decent finisher, what's his long shots? 14. He could play well as a shadow striker, to be fair. I think that might be his best role. Uh, Lee Chong Yong is a 27-year-old South Korean international. Again, behind the striker or on this right-hand side. He, he's a D OK backup. I think is the best we can hope for him. Um, he's at worth 8.5 million, so he might be worth cashing in on. Then we've got Bakary Sacco. This is our first left-hand sided player. Uh, just a good pacey winger, out and out winger, decent amount of pace, good crossing, decent dribbling. He's fine as a squad rotation. Starts the game three months out, so bear that in mind. Then we've got Andros Townsend, the new guy in the team. This guy looks really, really good. 24 years old, he's got a few caps for England now. Uh, surprised he didn't make it at Tottenham. He was getting in the first team, then had that bad injury and just never got in again. So uh, a bit unlucky there for him. But he could do very, very well at uh, Crystal Palace. Then we've got Wilfred Zaha, who's wanted. Who's he wanted by Matt Man City? <coughs> okay, so he's, he's travelling around Manchester. That's quite interesting. Wilfred Zaha, still only 23 He's all about the pace. Um, there's not as much end product with him, but he's decent. He's very decent. Can play on both sides. Can play on him as an inside forward on the left. Uh, I probably wouldn't, to be fair. I'd play him as a winger both sides. But very, very good. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this side. Next up, we've got Connor Wickham. Who's your big target man, basically? 16 jumping reach, 16 heading. If you want to play a target man, this is your guy. Can play behind, but I probably wouldn't. To be honest, i play him up top or sell him. This <laughs> is my option. Then we've got Loic Remy. Really good loan signing from Chelsea. Um, I think, yeah, he's a pretty decent player. Good all-rounder, really. Um, 29 years old now, so make the most out of him. I think he can be up there with your 
sort of backup really uh, to your main man. You can play him on the left as well as an inside forward, which actually he isn't bad at. Could be an option. And then we've got uh, Quezzi Apaya, who's not very good, really. Um, is he transfer listed? Yeah. Sell him, move him on, get a couple of million for him. We've got Fraser Campbell, out for four months at the start of the game. Again, another pacey player. Um, he's not the best in the world, but we don't have many pacey strikers, so at least he provides something different. And then obviously you've got the big signing of the summer, Christian Benteke, and this is going to be your main man. This, he's the daddy. I love him. I'm a Liverpool fan. I really enjoyed him at Liverpool. Um, I felt sorry for him because he just didn't fit the style. It wasn't that he wasn't good enough. It's just not how we play football since Klopp came in. Uh, I think he's found a really good home in Crystal Palace, and I think he could do very well. So, as for tactics, just uh, oh, let's talk about where we strengthen first with our 10 million. Um, we do need a backup left back, like I was saying, maybe a loan signing just to fill out there. Um, I would get a maybe another centre back as well. I think defence is probably the weakest area. I think that's where you could work on. Uh, first, we've got a decent amount of decent central midfielders, and we've got a decent amount of wingers. We could even probably get rid of one, like a Lee Chung Young, maybe get rid of him, and also get rid of a striker. I'd play one up top. Um, well, I'd either play with the current team, I'd play one up top, and that's Christian Benteke. I'd get Wilfred Zaha, Andros Townsend, and the likes to just get balls into him because he will score plenty of goals. If I was to spend money on a new striker, I'd go for a, a typically pacey, smaller striker and then play two up top with Benteke as a target man support and the striker running off him, scoring more of the goals. As it stands now, Fraser Campbell just isn't good enough to do that job. Um, you could play Loic Remy there because he's a complete forward. Um, so maybe Loic Remy and Benteke if you wanted to play two up top. I think that would be quite nice, but pretty good team. So... What we expected to achieve this season was mid-table with £10 million. I think it's doable. I don't think it's going to be easy. Um, it will mean getting a cup, shoring up this defence is important, and I think you can do it. I think it's going to be a fun one. Um, I, like I said, I do really like Benteke, so I, I'll be interested to see him, and especially him and Andros Townsend, I think will make the save quite fun to see. And Johan Kabay, obviously very good player as well. I think this will be a fun one. So let me know in the comments who, what sort of purchases you'd make. Would you go for two up top or one up top? What sort of basic formation would you be looking at? And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the place and check out my channel for all sorts of other FM17 content. And I'll see you bright and early in the next video. Bye-bye.